well, Nathan. How are you this morning? Pleasure to be here. We saw here. some uh, really exciting stuff in the US share market, certainly wild and woolly, and virtually straight up after the Fed announced its hiking rates three times. It's going in 2022. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tapering quickly, and the market just went zoosh, straight up. So, what's your read, Nathan? By the way, Nathan, a little bit of your background. Hi folks, I'm a, a trader here. I have been trading the markets for 15, 20 years, uh, various market conditions. And here at uh, ACY, I'm one of the uh, senior account managers. Cool, and very happening chap, and that's why we're chatting for you. All right, um, you might have seen my earlier video today and I was talking about how I actually think the Fed's gonna have three to five rate hikes. Yes. Into more like five, maybe even six, but certainly I would say five is more likely than three. Because remember what, six, next year? Yeah, in 2022. Okay. Okay. So we're the only people in the world saying that today. Hmm. What do you think? The concern I've got, Clifford, and thanks for bringing it up, is the hundreds of economists coming straight out of Yale, working their way for the Federal Reserve. How is it that our chief market economist at ACY has been correct fundamentally and they've been wrong. That, well, I appreciate you saying that, that. That's the thing that concerns me a little bit. Well, um, concerns you in that I may be wrong or concerns me that the Fed's so far behind. But I think <laughs> I, I think the, the reason is that everyone coming out of the ivory schools in the US at the moment oh. is still learning that the United States is the most important economy in the world. And really, it's one of three now, mm -hmm. Europe and China and the US. Uh, and everyone still thinks that the old textbook models work and the world's drastically changed. So for instance, I think you were leading me into the inflation question. 100%. Okay, so what I really want to quickly say one more time is inflation at ACY mm -hmm. with the team here, yep. we have figured out what is driving the world's inflation when the Federal Reserve has not yet figured it out. So far, the Federal Reserve, I mean, Jerome Powell's comments this morning when he was speaking after the announcement, he was really sort of dancing around, sidestepping, uh, and he was basically admitting that they got it wrong on the whole transitory thing. Right. But he said, he kept saying inflation is different in character now, but he couldn't say what it was. Whereas here at ACY, we've known for about six months that it is a product of freedom of pricing pressures. So basically, freedom of pricing is a new phenomenon this century. Everyone had it last century. If you were a director last century, you went to work in the morning, you went, how much does it cost to, to make the widget? How much profit do we sure. want to make? That's the price. That's freedom of pricing. True. Globalization ended that. You can only maintain market share by increasing productivity, not lifting prices. If you wanted to have market share, you had to drop prices. So there was this productivity surge you didn't have freedom of pricing. The pandemic took the lid off that box. So now Gave people go, excuse. everyone's got the cover story Fair for enough. raising prices. They're not bad guys. And the consumer doesn't change because of price hikes at the moment. That's freedom of pricing. That's inflation. And that's why at the same time we've got high earnings because they're all increasing their profit margins. Inflation is going up. Mm -hmm. The stock market's going up on the earnings without realizing that that short-term joy is going to be long-term pain. So at what point are we going to take the medicine? Because this idea of saying, yeah. I've got a sore finger, so why don't I just chop off my arm, and now I no longer have a sore finger, seems to be the Fed's approach. Yeah, it's not really my philosophy of life, <laughs> to be honest, Nathan. Okay, but, okay good point. Um, I think what's going to happen is that because, I remember six months ago we said, uh, the Fed will be hiking in the first half of 2022 yep. when the Fed was saying, we're not going to be hiking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So we, we seem to know what the Fed's going to do better than the Fed. Uh, and at the moment, I think the Fed, now that they think they're going to have three hikes in 2022, I think they're going to have five. So, and they could be significant rate hikes, but this is the thing. If they raised rates early, you'd go, do. So I hope you appreciate all the technicals, everyone. Now they raised rates early, you'd go, do. The, the gentle hikes, right? But if you raise late and inflation's out of the bag, it's more like boom, 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 right? Which will have a huge effect. Which will have a huge effect. And it creates an economic roller coaster mm. going forward. So instead of this sort of mild walk through the park interest rate cycle, yep. you create such an impact on the economy, first of all, allowing it to get completely out of control and then hitting it heavily 
those reverberations go on for several years into the future. So it means we're going to have a roller coaster US economy and an Australian economy too if the RBA doesn't wake up. Do you believe them is really my question, first of all. Like, for example, they have been threatening this type of of raising rates. Everything's going to normalise. Yes. And that's been for many, many years now and they haven't done it. For example, when we were in lockdown, I was planning on losing weight, um, getting out, exercising, but I didn't do any of those things. Go to Ashley Martin, but I didn't do any of those things, Clifford. What makes you think the Fed is actually going to follow through? I think they're going to follow through because it's still going to be too little too late, Nathan. So if, right, right, it's not like they're saying they're going to push the envelope in any way. They're saying we're going to do this late behind the curve and act very conservative in how we speak about it so that we look like we know what we're doing. (laughs) That's that's what the Fed's doing. So I think the... (laughs) I think the three rate hikes are given because... Don't tell you what, that's what I do. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that's that. But I don't know. Markets, right? Let's talk markets. How do you make money out of this? What do you think? What what trades would you be looking at over today, tomorrow, or market directions would you be looking at given what we've just seen in both the economic fundamental impact Mm -hmm. and in the price action that's occurred? Well... Fundamentally, based on what they're saying, and let's just assume what they're saying is going to come to fruition, right? So based on that, you would assume that if you also include the fact that they had their retail sales figures come out, and the retail sales figures were worse than expected, and if you include inflation, they're negative. Okay, so are we going to see the rise of interest rates? And we're seeing it immediately you know, negative um, data coming out about their economy. So two things are happening right now for me. One, Clifford Bennett uh, fundamentally has analysed shorting the uh, S&P 500, okay, predicting a top there, and that's been over a number of months. Yes. We also have technically... Well, yeah, but the fundamentals are telling us what is likely to happen. Mm. The or should happen, mm. and the technicals are now agreeing with you. Okay. So our own technical analysts in here, for example, Duncan Cooper, they're, they're calling a double top reversal on this S&P okay. 500 with oil under pressure, which is a large component of that affects, say, the Dow. Mm-hmm. There could be some shorting opportunities coming okay. up, and mm-hmm. therefore, with inflation where it is, we could see some really long opportunities on undervalued uh, commodity assets like, say, gold and silver. Good spot. Good spot. That like, would be... Like the pun, a good spot. Oh, you like... <laughs> um, so, <laughs> no, but well that said. Big enough. But well said, well said. And I think Duncan's right on the double top, but given this rally on the Fed yeah. announcement, and this is purely it's probably technical. going to be a triple top. Yeah. But, you know, I still do think it's going to be a top. Um, and I think... The I think gold is a buy, actually. I think everything's just going to get suddenly so hard now and people are going to get confused. They, get, they are again going to buy mm. gold. I've been saying for a while time, steadily accumulating this volatile And it's had a good formation. spot. It's tested um, that daily support. Yeah, so, yeah I think so. Yeah. Started to bounce. I'm not sure about the US dollar continuing to strengthen. I mean, 24 hours ago, I was saying the US dollar is ready to rally mm. hard again. But that's, not, that's looking a little bit more problematic today after that really good rally in the euro. Um, and the Australian dollar's had a good bounce, but I think the Australian dollar, I still like selling Australia. Um, very Australian of me, but I do like selling Australia, uh, both on the currency and the equities front. I think from a global perspective, Australia is seen to be problematic, uh, given a permanent slowdown in China's economic activity, Absolutely. which we're forecasting. Uh, not to, I guess, coming back to your key point though, Nathan, sorry, your key question was about um, the outlook and, and growth and retail sales being soft, mm-hmm. right? We're, I'm forecasting a below trend US economic growth path, right? So I'm not forecasting high inflation because we're going to have strong, spectacular growth. I'm forecasting high inflation because we're going to have freedom of pricing and in an environment of a yeah. below trend economic growth path, but the inflation will become so highly problematic and entrenched that the Fed has to hike rates even at a below trend economic path. 
What happens then, like you say, if you look at New Zealand, for example, the New Zealand raise their rates, in fact, they're 400% higher than, say, the US's rates, yeah. yet their currency has died, like, yes. like you said. Is the potential, therefore, that the US dollar, like you're saying, could fall yes. even if they raise rates? I, at the moment, I think there's so much fear in the world, you know, of the pandemic and everything, that I don't think the US dollar is going to decline. It could have a correction here, but I don't think it's right. going to a okay. sustained decline. Got you. Um, and Just I not think, a massive growth. And I think New Zealand is, a is such an extreme <laughs> example of everything these days. But New Zealand, you know, their services sector is in trouble. Uh, a lot of their data is a little bit patchy. Uh, they're hiking rates to head off inflation, but maybe they're being a little bit too aggressive. I mean, Australia's doing nothing because we have the slowest reverse bank of Australia Reserve Bank. Um, and so we're not doing anything. New Zealand might be doing a little bit too much. The US has to catch up. You've got to remember Mexico, South Korea, several other countries around the world have been raising rates for a while now, and they're up to their second or third hikes. Uh, Iceland. So so yeah, the, the, you know, yeah. the uh, America, Australia, uh, we're behind the curve. ECB will be hiking, but obviously the ECB, in case everyone didn't know, the United States is the hare and Europe is the tortoise. If you just approach all of your economics from that point of view, you'll be ahead of the curve. Did you want to mention anything about bulls and bears, Nathan? Well, I did actually. I was watching TV last night and the biggest movie coming out uh, in the world this summer, not to do an advert for them, is Clifford the Big Red Bear. So watch out for him in cinemas everywhere. He'll be sitting there eating popcorn, taking up about 10 seats, looking forward to it. Do you feel like this <laughs> bearish... What effect... It, okay, so my question is, all jokes aside, how bad could it get? Like talking oh, of the okay. S&P 500. Okay. So I don't think we're going to have a, a terribly, well, I don't, I'm not looking for a bad economic outcome. Right. I just see uh, financial markets having a long overdue, rather profound quantum level correction. So for the S&P 500, that could be as bad as 20%. I think it's more likely 10, 15, but it could be as bad as 20. And if it got became entrenched, mm. it could stretch into 30%. But we're not talking about that happening overnight. The 30% would happen over, say, 12 to 18 months. But I do think the risk of 5, 10, 15% um, within sort of the next few months, the first quarter or, you know, around March, April next year, as the Fed's starting to hike and, and, and starting to hike more aggressively than people previously expected, because remember... Because they have to. Yeah, and the Fed's right. conversation will change. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is their opening salvo on their shifting position. It already has changed. Yeah. First of all, it was transitory, and now they said, we completely got that wrong. Yeah. And it's not transitory, well, I have, so... they haven't said that. They just said it's a different wow. character to what we expected. Yes. Yes, all right. very true, Look, very thank true. thank you very much, everyone. I think we'll wrap up. Did you have any other, like, real strong market view on anything, Nathan? Uh, uh, the only thing I'm really looking at is, for the long-term play here, is undervalued assets. And as I mentioned, I think silver's possibly one of the most okay. undervalued uh, assets for the long-term projection as we move into this inflationary environment. Yes. And we're in a position where global economies are starting to slow down. Yes. Um, and this US dollar, I mean, the reality is, are they going to sacrifice this US dollar to save uh, the political atmosphere of their stock markets? So, yeah, I think people need to be aware it's not the Fed's job to save the stock market mm -hmm. unless there's savage dislocation. And people need to be mindful of that. Their number one game is employment, inflation, not you know, supporting the stock market. So I think they'll let the dollar slip if okay. that happens. But the dollar should benefit from the rate hikes. But they will let the stock market slip. Look, thank you very much for listening in today. It's been a thank, pleasure. Thank Thanks you for being for on the show. Uh, take care, it. everyone. And actually, why don't you have a surprisingly good day out there? Why not? Please Thanks do. Thanks very much. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities.